little bit of biographical information taken from today's worship guide from the Cathedral of St. Paul. Bishop Michael John Eisen, soon to be Bishop Michael John Eisen, was born January 12, 1967, the youngest of six children. He grew up in Fairmont, Minnesota, was baptized and attended grade school at the Church of St. John Vianney in Fairmont and graduated from Fairmont High School in 1985. He enrolled at St. John's University in Collegeville in 1989, earned a B.S. degree in mathematics and computer science, and worked from 89 to 98 as a systems analyst at the 3M headquarters in Maplewood. It wasn't until 1998 that he sensed a call to the priesthood and entered the the St. Paul Seminary School of Divinity pre-theology program and became a seminarian for the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis. He was ordained a deacon by Archbishop Harry Flynn May 1st, 2004, and a priest the following year, also by Archbishop Flynn, on May 28th, 2005. He's a well-rounded priest. He is very much so, and he has served at a number of parishes since then, parochial vicar at Divine Mercy Parish in Faribault. In 2007, he was a pastor of St. Timothy in Maple Lake, and thereafter, pastor of St. Raphael in Crystal from 2012 to 2015, and on July 1st, 2015, named pastor of St. Mary and St. Michael parishes in Stillwater and canonical administrator of St. Croix Catholic School. And then in 2020, he assumed responsibility as parochial administrator for St. Charles Parish in Bayport as well. He served in post-abortion pastoral outreach and as a member of the board for the Archdiocesan Medical Benefits Plan. Unless I'm mistaken, it was uh, January 5th that uh, he was appointed by Pope Francis as Auxiliary Bishop of uh, of St. Paul in Minneapolis and the titular Bishop of Newport. Mm. Now, do we know which Newport that was? Because (laughs) (laughs) an Auxiliary Bishop is always named the titular Bishop of some see that no longer exists. So would it be... Newport, Maine, or? <laughs> <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine, Paul. I don't know. It, it is interesting because uh, I, I have noticed uh, uh, that, uh, you know, oftentimes uh, an auxiliary bishop will become titular bishop of some far flung location that we may never have heard of, but right. every once in a while it uh, uh, ends up being a place in the United States that just isn't a diocese anymore. Right. I saw one uh, became the titular bishop of Leed, which would be Leed, South, South Dakota. Dakota. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, there, there have been a few others, too. Mm-hmm. So, Yes, there's a, there's a necessity that since we, we say one church, one bishop, that every bishop does have uh, Episcopal oversight over a particular diocese, whether that's a functional, functional diocese or not. Perhaps uh, under the under the sea it exists, but somewhere there is a diocese under, uh, in Bishop-elect Eisen's case, the, the diocese of Newport is under his Episcopal oversight. If you're a bishop, you got to be a bishop of someplace. Of someplace, that's correct, that's <laughs> correct. Got to be the apostolic representative in that local church. But of course, he is also an he is serving as an or he will be serving as an apostolic representative here in the Archdiocese of Saint Paul in Minneapolis as our second auxiliary bishop. It's the first time we've had two in how many years? Yeah, it's been a while now. It's been Mm. quite some time. But I know Archbishop Archbishop Hebda said on our Practicing Catholic Radio show that he had asked for a second auxiliary bishop um, early on in the process and is very pleased now to receive. Bishop-elect Eisen, soon to be Bishop Eisen, as his second auxiliary bishop. Which just, in my opinion, makes sense, because God is doing so many rich and wonderful things here in this local church. Amen. The uh, presiding bishop, of course, of this Mass will be Archbishop Bernard Hebda. Principal co-consecrators, Bishop Joseph Williams, auxiliary bishop of the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis, and Bishop Andrew Cousins, a former auxiliary bishop, now the Bishop of Crookston, Minnesota. Other bishops present include the uh, uh, Papal Nuncio, yes, Archbishop Christophe Pierre. Uh, the Papal Nuncio is, is kind of like the ambassador of uh, the Holy See to the entire United States. And we're honored to have him present in our cathedral today. And it's from him, I believe, that the the men who are 
about to become bishop, received the initial phone call. Yes, it usually <laughs> is. Yes. Oh. And, and some say, are you sure you've got the right number? <laughs> Indeed. I can imagine, though, that most uh, most priests who uh, receive a call from the Washington, D.C. area pick up as soon as possible. Probably so, yeah. I see that uh, another one of the bishops who is uh, going to be present here today is my old dear friend, uh, Bishop Don Kettler, who is now the retired bishop of St. Cloud, Minnesota. Uh, he was my pastor in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, some years back. Now, if you're watching on Metro Cable Channel 6, you can see that the bishops are just now making their way to the back of the cathedral for the opening procession, which will stands or stands to be quite lengthy um, as we have a number of representatives from a number of different uh, orders and deacons we have seminarians who are going to be part of the opening procession as well so uh, many beautiful things to come some wonderful music will be heard uh, in this mass too we hope not to obliterate too much of it at the moment what you're hearing is is uh, organ music which is simply kind of to fill out until the bishops begin their procession. Indeed. In fact, this, this Mass is, I remember when I served at the cathedral, it was always a blessing to have a master of, well, I guess it's now master of celebrations rather than master of ceremonies, but it was always helpful in the archdiocesan office of worship they would send over, usually just one master of ceremony or ceremonies or master of celebrations, but uh, as it is, as it stands now, for this particular ordination mass, we have four. Four, I saw that. Master of Ceremonies. We have uh, Father Tom Margavichus, who is, of course, the director of the Office of Worship for the Archdiocese. <laughs> Father John Paul <laughs> Erickson. On the internal document here, it, it names him as main traffic cop. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, Father John Paul Erickson, who is the former director of the Office of Worship. And Father uh, now pastor at uh, Transfiguration, Transfiguration in yes. uh, Oakdale. Oakdale. And uh, Father Paul Hedman as well. And Deacon, Deacon Michael Nevin are all serving as uh, Masters of Ceremonies in this wonderful Mass to come. So this is, uh, except for perhaps the Chrism Mass, where um, or maybe this will, I'm sure this will rival the Chrism Mass for its glory and splendor and what we will see here at the magnificent Cathedral of St. Paul. I found it interesting to note that uh, Bishop-elect Eisen uh, used to work at 3M headquarters, and mm. and uh, the, then I noticed it said in Maplewood. So so he, he was never at the building, which is now used as the Archdiocese and Catholic. Oh, center. right. Yeah, good thought. I hadn't, I hadn't made that connection, but very good thought. Yes, indeed. Well, we're uh, waiting for the procession to begin here, and there will be a ton of bishops, priests, and deacons, and... What are we looking at now? The, the Knights, Knights of, of Columbus? Columbus are making their way up the center aisle in procession, but they will they will flank the procession as it enters the sanctuary with their swords drawn and aloft. These are the fourth degree knights. They uh, they are the ones who wear the uh, more formal dress as part of their ceremonial duties, and uh, the sash and carry a sword. like there are indeed a number of the lay faithful present for this wonderful day. I notice a big space at the front of the cathedral reserved for the concelebrating priests as well as bishops and deacons who will be present here.
who are watching the procession of first of many representatives of the lay faithful, the Knights of Columbus, the Knights of the Holy Sepulchre, uh, now many of the, uh, uh, most of the priests of the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis. Indeed, we saw many of the seminarians coming in as well and taking their place in the pews, and now we have the deacons of, of the church coming in as well. They'll be followed by a number of uh, a number of priests, and uh, then we'll get a number of bishops as well. Oh, yes. Again, uh, the splendor of the church. Just a note, uh, you can always tell a deacon by the diagonal stool. Mm-hmm. It goes over one shoulder rather than both. Symbolizing the garment with which Jesus clothed himself when he went to wash the feet of his disciples in the Last Supper.
We've heard the cantor Tucker Moore intone the entrance antiphon, Hail Faithful Priest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, what a glorious day. How wonderful to have all of you here as we celebrate the ordination of our newest auxiliary. I've never prayed before that we would have a larger cathedral, but we could have used one today. <laughs> How magnificent that you're here to pray with us, uh, to pray for Bishop Elect Eisen, and indeed to pray for this local church. We're particularly grateful for the presence of uh, His Excellency, Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the Holy Father's representative, the Nuncio in the United States. Very grateful to all of these bishops who have gathered here as well. How wonderful to see so many priests and deacons and consecrated men and women and those who belong to our equestrian orders and other knights. Grateful to all of you as you help us to celebrate this day. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. 
through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, who have bestowed on us paschal remedies, endow your people with heavenly gifts, so that possessed of perfect freedom, they may rejoice in heaven over what gladdens them now on earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading will be proclaimed in English. It's from the Acts of the Apostles, and it is going to be proclaimed by Philip Moosberger. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said to the Jewish people, let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart And they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made 
to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad. The second reading of coming will be from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy, chapter 1. It will be proclaimed in Spanish by Silvia Artiniega Dominguez, and we will provide an English translation for our viewers and listeners. Segunda lectura del... La... Reading 
From the letter, segunda la, of Saint Paul, segunda Saint lectura de la carta Paul, del apóstol apostle San Pablo a Timoteo. God, Pablo, apóstol de Jesucristo, Jesus. por voluntad de Dios, Timothy, conforme a la promesa de vida que hay en Cristo Grace, Jesús, a Timoteo, Father, hijo querido, Jesus, te deseo la gracia, la misericordia, I am grateful la to God, Dios, whom I worship with a clear Jesus, conscience, Jesús, as my ancestors did, de noche, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. I yearn to see you again, recalling your tears, so that I may be filled with joy as I recall your sincere faith that you first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and that I am confident lives also in you. For this reason, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a, of power, and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed preacher and apostle and teacher. On this account, I am suffering these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know him in whom I have believed and am confident that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. Take as your norm the sound words that you heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. Pero no me avergüenzo, porque sé en quién he puesto mi confianza. Hasta el último día, lo que me ha encomendado, conforme a tu predicación a la sólida doctrina del Evangelio. Doctrina que recibiste de mí acerca de la fe y el amor que tiene su fundamento en Cristo Jesús. Guarda este tesoro con la ayuda del Espíritu Santo que habita en nosotros. Palabra de Dios. The word of the Lord. The Gospel from the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John will be proclaimed in English. This is the day 
the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Mary Magdalene stayed outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had told her. The Gospel of the Lord.
rendition of verses 3 and 5 in the Venn Please be seated. The invocation of the Holy Spirit immediately preceding the presentation of the elect, that is, the man who is about to become a bishop. Most Reverend Father, the Church of St. Paul in Minneapolis asks you to ordain this priest, Father Michael John Eisen, to the responsibility of the, of the Episcopate. Have you a mandate from the Apostolic See? We have. Let it be read. Your Excellency, Archbishop Evda, my brother bishops, dear priests, deacons, consecrated religious, and lay faithful of the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis, dear friends, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. I still enjoy good memories of my time with you a little one over one year ago. You remember Bishop Williams? <laughs> I see his family there, you know, just in the middle. Doctor, <laughs> and the wife, and the children, and the grandchildren, and the whole family, you know. I am pleased to be with you once again, as Father Michael Eisen is now consecrated auxiliary bishop of St. Paul in Minneapolis, to assist in the ministry of Archbishop Ebda. Once again, this local church rejoices to see one of its own parish priests raised to the fullness of the priesthood. Even though the parishioners of Stillwater and Bayport, you know that? You know these parishes? <laughs> They are there, no? <laughs> and the school family of Saint Croix. They, here this is Saint Croix. I don't know why. <laughs> Will miss Father Eisen. He is now able to share the gift of his pastoral care with all the people of God in this archdiocese. Bishop-elect Eisen, I understand you have a background in mathematics and computer science, so I was told. I know. And yet, I'm sure that you never calculated that you would become a bishop. <laughs> you even said that you were a little terrified when you received this call. Don't worry. It is okay to be a little terrified. Ju just not too much, by the way. <laughs> Hopefully, you are like the holy women on the morning of the resurrection, fearful yet overjoyed. 
After all, many people are joyful that you are going to be their bishop. In choosing you for this ministry, Pope Francis has elected a priest whom the Church recognizes as a true pastor and a spiritual father. Like Christ the Good Shepherd, you know the names of your sheep. I heard that this morning. <laughs> it's interesting. And you and your sheep know and hear your voice. That's important. And as a father, you have loved and cared for your spiritual children of all ages. And by the way, Archbishop, I'm very happy to see so many children today. Good on you, <laughs> the Archbishop. While it is hard to leave your parish family, God, know, God now gives you an even larger spiritual family in your ministry as bishop. These members of God's family will be blessed by your ministry, and God will also give you many consolations in that same ministry. As Pope Francis said to a group of bishops, I quote, the task consigned to you is to be fathers to everyone. May your heart be ever big enough to accept each person as Christ's heart knows how to take in every human being with divine love. End of the quote. Bishop Elect Eisen, may God continue to expand your fatherly and pastoral heart as you become a bishop. And now we've, I will now read the Apostolic Letter of Appointment. This is a translation in English, but uh, the bishop himself will show the original, signed by the Holy Father. I hope, you know, it's a very small, very, very tiny signing, but the most important is this, the Holy Father's writing. Francis, bishop, servant of the servants of God, to our beloved son, Michael John Eisen, from the clergy of the Archdiocese of St. Paul and Minneapolis, and until now, pastor there of the parishes of St. Michael and St. Mary in Stillwater, appointed auxiliary bishop of the same ecclesial community, and at the same time, promoted to the titular see of Newport, greetings and apostolic blessing. Because the ministry of pastors is of great importance for the faith, the morals, and the spiritual growth of Christ's faithful, we, in exercising the office of successor of Peter, pay close attention to the needs of ecclesial communities and, in like manner, listen carefully to our brothers in the episcopate who decide to serve as diligently as possible the people of their diocese. Since the Archbishop of St. Paul and Minneapolis requested an auxiliary bishop owing to the great pastoral needs, we have decided to grant his petition most willingly and gladly. Accordingly, we carefully consider you, beloved son, whose special priestly qualities, practical experience, sound learning, and pastoral zeal persuade us to regard you as suitable to that office. Therefore, upon consultation with the Dicastery for Bishops, having given proper consideration to the matter by our apostolic authority, we appoint you titular bishop of Newport and likewise auxiliary of the Archdiocese of St. Paul and Minneapolis, conferring upon you all the due rights and imposing the relative obligations in accordance with the prescriptions of the Code of Canon Law. Prior to your episcopal ordination, which you may receive from any Catholic bishop anywhere outside the city of Rome, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors in compliance with the norms of the sacred canons. Finally, beloved son, we exhort you to assist your archbishop with the utmost diligence possible as a bishop, and together with him, 
to serve joyfully and devotedly the community of St. Paul in Minneapolis. In accomplishing all of these tasks, may the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and that of her spouse, St. Joseph, assist and go before you so that, as a true witness of the Gospel, you may be able, under the enlightenment and guidance of the Holy Spirit, to lead the faithful who have been entrusted to your care to paradise, that secure heaven of eternal life, namely Christ. Given at Rome, at St. John Lateran, on the fifth day of the month of January, in the year of the Lord, 2023, the 10th of our pontificate, and it is signed Pope Francis. We've just heard the papal nuncio, Archbishop Christophe Pierre, reading the papal mandate. I think my favorite part was when he referred to the Catholic schools of Saint Croix. <laughs> That's right. And it's not called that here, but I don't know why. <laughs> Being a Frenchman himself, of course, he would he ought to know. I, I you just love the the familiarity, the humor that is used uh, in in this sort of ceremony. You know, it's very high, it's very formal, and yet at the same time, there is abundant joy. It's palpable Indeed. throughout the cathedral, and we're going to see that uh, right now as actually Bishop Elect Eisen shows this mandate to the faithful. He's currently making his way around the sanctuary, showing it to the other uh, co-consecrators and the other bishops present, but now he makes his way into the main church and shows it to the people amidst thunderous applause. Archbishop had the joked at the outset that he's never prayed for a larger cathedral, but we could use one today. <laughs> and uh, Bishop Elect Eisen is going to get his steps in as he makes his way around the already magnificent and huge cathedral, showing it to all the people present. singing a Celtic Kyrie, but it can barely be heard above the applause. Mm -hmm. And that's actually from the Church of St. Michael's Schola Tantorum under the direction of Jane Windnagel, out from uh, the Church of St. Michael, where then Father Eisen was, has been pastor uh, for so many years now. Paul, at least from the video feed that we're getting, it seems like there is not an empty seat in the house. No, I think it's a full house today. Yeah. Some people standing <laughs> along the edges as well. Uh, and the Archbishop was right. We could have used a bigger right. house today. <laughs> but what a glorious way to celebrate oh, Easter and the, the octave of Easter. Bring the local church together for such a wonderful and joyful occasion as this, where we see 
the resurrection of Jesus lived out in our midst as he continues to nourish and shepherd his church. Does he get to keep that letter and frame it and hang it in his office? <laughs> That's an excellent question, and I, I don't know. I don't suppose you'd want to run it through the uh, the Xerox machine <laughs> before. No, no before, not a good idea. Uh, probably not. Now he's returned to the sanctuary. The homily will be preached, of course, by Archbishop Bernard Hebda. That applause was certainly heartfelt. We are so blessed to have all of you here, but as I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, particularly we're blessed to have with us Archbishop Pierre, whose presence reminds us of our communion with the Holy Father, Pope Francis. Thank you, Archbishop, for being here, and thank you for the interest that you have shown in this local church and indeed in this province. Please pass on to His Holiness our deep appreciation for this appointment and assure the Holy Father that He has brought us great Easter hope. My gratitude extends as well to you, Bishop-elect Eisen. I am so grateful that you said yes to the Holy Father's call to serve as our auxiliary bishop. Michael, your openness to the work of the Holy Spirit inspires me. I hasten to offer as well congratulations to the Eisen family and to all those who have accompanied Father Eisen along the way and to all who have molded him into such an exceptional pastor. And finally, I offer congratulations to the priests of this archdiocese. It should be a source of pride that the Holy Spirit working through the Holy Father would have once again chosen one of your brothers for this office. I trust that our new auxiliary will bring to his new ministry the same loving commitment, the same willingness to work hard, the same giftedness that, that distinguishes you as a presbyterate. I've heard our new auxiliary mention on more than one occasion that when he looks at his brother priests in this archdiocese, that he sees men who are more capable and more suited for the office of bishop. Whatever you do, Mike, please don't mention their names to the nuncio. Huh? <laughs> we need all of our priests here. <laughs> I, for one, however, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, can see that the, law, the Lord has long been preparing Father Eisen to be Bishop Eisen. He's blessed him with extraordinary priestly gifts that are just what the doctor ordered for this archdiocese. Gifts that I trust are going to blossom and develop in a new way with today's ordination. It is apparent to me that the Lord loves Bishop Eisen in his abundance. How else do we explain 75 degrees in Minnesota in April, huh? <laughs> now the internet tells me that it was minus two when Bishop Cousins was ordained.
It was a high of minus four when Bishop Williams was ordained. <laughs> and it was minus 11 when we left this cathedral on the day that Archbishop Pierre bestowed upon me the pallium. <laughs> That's 86 degrees colder than it is today, huh? <laughs> you get the picture, Bishop-elect Eisen is beloved, huh? An equally impressive sign of God's favor and blessing, however, is manifested in today's readings. The first reading from the Acts of the Apostles in the Gospel are established by the church for this day. How providential to be given for an ordination date, these magnificent scriptural texts, which are read throughout the world on this Tuesday of the octave of Easter. I suspect that these Easter readings would speak volumes to a newly ordained bishop and to the church that he is called to serve. They give him two wonderful companions from this day forward in his Episcopal ministry, Mary Magdalene and Peter. It's interesting that they are both disciples who are well aware of their own weaknesses. We know from John's Gospel that Peter knew deeply Jesus' forgiveness after he denied him. While St. Luke tells us that Mary Magdalene had been healed by Jesus, having been freed from seven demons. So aware of their own frailties, they knew that Christ loved them gratuitously. It's not an earned love, but a love that pours forth spontaneously from the heart of Jesus. And it's a love that changes everything. It's Jesus' love that gave them both the courage to carry out the mission that Jesus entrusted to them. In Mary Magdalene's case, it was a commission to go and tell the disciples of her encounter with the risen Christ, a mission that she completed faithfully. In Peter's case, it's a broader commission to go where he doesn't want to go, to go forth to feed Jesus' sheep, his flock, to make disciples of all nations. We hear in the first reading how Peter responded to that command on the first Pentecost with amazing results. Mary Magdalene and Peter both have tender and powerful encounters with Jesus that compel them to go forth and to witness to him. I have no doubt, Bishop-elect Eisen, that the Lord in his love is calling you to witness as well. That was one of the themes of Bishop Cousin's excellent homily at Vespers last evening. No matter how unworthy you feel or how inadequately prepared you fear you may be, the Lord is calling you, as he did Mary Magdalene and Peter, to rely on his strength rather than on your weakness. You've done that beautifully in your many years of priestly service, and I trust that will continue. It's crucial that you keep before your eyes the tender encounters that you have had with the Lord. I know that you are a man of prayer and have made prayer a priority in your priesthood. No matter how great the demands of your work may be, I hope that you'll never allow your work to get in the way of your relationship with the Lord, who alone is our strength. Pope Francis consistently calls us as bishops to be men of discernment, and that requires that we have uh, prayer at the center of our lives and the sensitivity to the Holy Spirit that flows from that prayer. It has to be at the very foundation of our ministry. It's in the quiet of, our, of your prayer that you, like Mary Magdalene, will hear the Lord speak your name with love, bringing hope and healing into your life. It's then that you, like Mary Magdalene, will truly be able to recognize Jesus as your loving teacher, your master, and your Lord. It's clear to me that you've already been learning from the divine teacher. In the weeks since your appointment, I've heard from so many of your parishioners and your past flocks 
about your closeness to them and how, you, and how touched that they have been, that you know them by name. Nuncio mentioned that as well. Now, you don't just know them generically. You can call them by name. For so many of your flock, they have come to know of the Good Shepherd's love for them as individuals as you have vocalized their name. It's one of the powerful ways that they have been reminded that God knows each and every one of us. He calls us by name. I am praying that you will now be bringing that same pastoral insight, that same focus on the importance and dignity of each individual created in God's likeness to your ministry as bishop, helping us to remember that God knows and loves each of us. I think that it has been that respect that has made you such a brilliant collaborator with the priests, deacons, religious, and lay people in each of your parishes. Our local church, this archdiocese, needs that gift. I hope that doesn't scare you, or at least not too much, as the nuncio said. Huh? Christ and his church are both asking a great deal from you, but fortunately, you don't need to do this on your own. How wonderful that Christ has promised to be with his church until the end of time. That's reflected beautifully in the motto that you have chosen for your Episcopal service, Emmanuel, God with us. You will never be alone in your ministry. Christ will always be beside you, before you, and behind you. We're also blessed, Bishop-elect, that Christ founded his church on the apostles, on a group of men who would share that apostolic ministry and provide for that ministry to continue to the end of time. I love that today's gospel in the first reading both refer to the apostles as brothers. In sending Mary Magdalene to share the good news of his resurrection with the apostles, Jesus tells Mary to go to my brothers. Likewise, in the first reading, the Jews hearing the apostolic preaching on the first Pentecost are reported to have come to Peter and the apostles and asked, what are we to do, brothers? In the 13 years that I have been a bishop, I have come to appreciate the great gift that God has given to me and to the church through the fraternal bonds that are shared by bishops, beginning with the ties that we all share with the successor of Peter, Pope Francis. In the bull that was read today, he, the Holy Father keeps referring to his beloved son. Uh, later on, any time that you will meet him, he will speak to you as venerable brother. But it's that strong, uh, really fraternal bond that you have with Pope Francis and indeed with all of the bishops, not only those gathered here, but around the world that will make such a difference in your ministry. I hope that the many bishops who are here will remind you of that support this day and always. Along with your family, your brother priests, and those whom you will serve, your brother bishops and I intend to stand ready to be a source of support for you in the days and years ahead as you minister as a shepherd after the heart of Christ. Never hesitate to rely upon us, to rely upon the Lord, May we together help you to proclaim the Lordship of Emmanuel, God with us. May God, who has begun this good work in you, now bring it to fulfillment. Now we hear the promise of the elect. Bishop-elect Eisen will approach the Archbishop as the principal consecrator, and the Archbishop will ask him a number of questions. Please. The ancient rule of the Holy Fathers decrees that the one to be ordained bishop should be questioned in the presence of the people concerning his resolve to guard the faith and to discharge this office. Therefore, dear brother, do you resolve to carry out until death with the grace of the Holy Spirit the office entrusted to us by the apostles and to be passed on to you through the laying on of our hands? I do. Do you resolve to proclaim the gospel of Christ faithfully and unfailingly? 
I do. Do you resolve to guard the deposit of faith, pure and entire, according to the tradition preserved always and everywhere in the church from the time of the apostles? I do. Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain in her unity with the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of the blessed apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve as a devoted father to encourage the holy people of God and to guide them in the way of salvation together with the priests and deacons, your fellow ministers? I do. Do you resolve for the sake of the Lord's name to reach out in kindness and mercy to the poor, to strangers, and to all those in need? I do. Do you resolve as a good shepherd to seek out the sheep who stray and to gather them into the Lord's fold? I do. Do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for his holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? I do with the help of God. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. Please rise. Let us pray, dearly beloved, that the loving kindness of Almighty God, providing for the welfare of the church, will grant to this chosen one an abundance of his grace. Bishop-elect Eisen will now prostrate himself on the floor of the sanctuary at the cathedral for the litany of supplication. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy Angels of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, Joseph, Saint Peter, Saint Paul, Saint Andrew, Saint James, Saint John, Saint Thomas. James, Saint Philip, Saint Bartholomew, Saint Matthew, Saint Simon, Saint Jude, Saint Matthias. Saint Mary Magdalene, Saint Stephen, Saint Ignatius of Antioch, Saint Lawrence, Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, Saint Agnes. Saint Gregory, Saint Augustine, Saint Athanasius, Saint Basil, Saint Martin, Saint Benedict. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, Saint Francis Xavier, 
sind schon wir nie. Saint Catherine of Siena, Saint Teresa of Jesus, all holy men and women, saints of God, Lord be merciful, Lord deliver us, we pray, from all evil. Every sin, from everlasting death, by your incarnation, by your death and resurrection, by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Bless this chosen man. Bless and sanctify this chosen man. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate this chosen man. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Comfort the troubled and afflicted with your mercy. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Jesus, Son of the living God, Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Graciously hear our petitions, O Lord. And as you raise the horn of priestly grace over this your servant, pour out upon him the power of your blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Certainly one of the high points of this ordination mass now comes the laying on of hands, the prayer of ordination, and the anointing of the head, and handing on of the book of the Gospels, and investiture with the insignia of office. It really is a powerful thing to see the ongoing apostolic succession taking place in our midst at this time, at this very moment.
If you're just joining us, we are taking in the Episcopal ordination of Bishop Michael Eisen, right now in the midst of the laying on of the hands by all of the bishops present at the ordination. We do so in silence. I mentioned my friend Bishop Don Kettler, who was about to lay hands on Bishop-elect Eisen, and we also noticed uh, the presence of Bishop Robert Barron, who is now the bishop of uh, the Diocese of Rochester, Winona, Minnesota. During the prayer of ordination, the book of the Gospels is opened over the head of the bishop-elect, and it is held there until the conclusion of the prayer. Two deacons now have that in place. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who know all things before they came to be. It is you who established order in your church through your gracious word, who from the beginning predestined a righteous people born of Abraham, who instituted rulers and priests and did not leave your sanctuary without ministry who from the beginning of the world have been pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Now pour forth upon this chosen one the power that is from you, the governing spirit whom you gave to your beloved son, Jesus Christ, and whom he gave to the holy apostles, who established the church in each place as your sanctuary to the glory and unfailing praise of your name. Grant, O Father, knower of all hearts, that this your servant, whom you have chosen for the episcopate, may nourish your holy flock, and may without reproach exercise before you the high priesthood, serving you night and day, that he may unceasingly cause your face to shine upon us, and offer the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the strength of the spirit of the high priesthood, he may have authority to forgive sins according to your command, that he may apportion offices according to your precept, and loosen every bond according to the authority you gave the apostles. May he be pleasing to you in meekness and purity of heart, offering a sweet fragrance to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, both now and forever and ever. Amen. Archbishop will now anoint the head of Bishop-elect Eisen with holy chrism and pray a prayer as he does so.
May God, who has made you a sharer in the high priesthood of Christ, himself pour out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessing. This is not the simple anointing as at a baptism or confirmation, but he was pouring that on there pretty he, good. He, he got a good, <laughs> a good dousing. Yes, you know? he did. After cleansing his hands, the archbishop will move on to the handing on of the book of the Gospels. Receive the gospel and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, and adorned with undefiled faith, preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. Receive the mitre and let the splendor of holiness shine in you so that when the chief priest appears, the chief shepherd appears, you may merit to receive an unfading crown of glory. Receive the crozier, the sign of the pastoral office and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the Church of God. Three of the visible signs, marks of a bishop. Hold on for a sec. The ring, the mitre, and the crozier. Yes. Auxiliary Bishop. Congratulations, Bishop Eisen. May your ministry be long and fruitful. Bishop Eisen will now receive the fraternal kiss from the Archbishop and all bishops present while the antiphon is sung. Proclamandia tradias tu victoria. 
This is a celebration of the Eucharist, and we are now entering into the liturgy of the Eucharist with the preparation of the gifts. So appropriate, too, as we've just been granted this great gift by Almighty God in the person of Bishop Eisen and the Auxiliary Bishop for the Archdiocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis. And what better way to render thanks than through the perfect offering of thanks given by our Lord himself on the cross as we participate in that through the Holy Eucharist. Bearing the gifts up to the front, members of the bishop's family. So we'll bring them up and hand them off to the newly ordained Bishop Michael Ivan.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health 
and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for me, your unworthy servant, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of bishop, and in your mercy keep safe your gifts in me, so that what I have received by divine commission I may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. 
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
We are listening and viewing the Episcopal ordination of now Bishop Michael John Eisen. We've come to the point of distribution of Holy Communion, and during the distribution of communion, we have some audio clips to play for you from Bishop, then Bishop Elect Eisen's first press conference after the news was made known here in the local church that he was elected to the Episcopacy. First up is uh, a bit where he talks about his gratitude toward his parents. Let's listen to that. And the next, I just want to thank my family. So, uh, my mother and father are both uh, praise God with the Lord. My dad passed away. I'm the youngest of six. My dad passed away at the age of 61, so very young. I was 21. Um, and so that, that was transformational that, that I can still remember vivid things of that week. And then my mom passed away about 12, 13 years later, she, but she had already had Alzheimer's even when my dad passed away. So a, a different um, kind of relationship with my parents in my, in my 20s. But I would never, never say that I was shortchanged when it comes to my parents. Um, super examples of love. Uh, this didn't happen when I was practicing. <laughs> so just seeing them love each other, and uh, I think I being the youngest, I got to see that in my like, my last few years of high school when I was the only one in the house. Just uh, how much my dad loved my mom, and my mom loved my dad, and and then right after that, their love for the faith, as you might guess. <laughs> so I remember my dad. I don't know if anybody else remembers him saying this. He would walk around the house and say, "Your old man could have been a theologian." And he never had a day of college. <laughs> but on his bookshelf, he had uh, um, The Life of Christ, is by Fulton Sheen, and John the Twenty Third's autobiography. And he, he was reading those, and now those two are those two books are in my office. Um, so, so love for the faith, and kind of a love for for I think faith and reason. My dad, and then my mom, just very uh, devotional love for the church, love for prayer, love for the Holy Mass, love for the rosary. We prayed the rosary every day as a family. I can think of those those summer nights. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'll introduce my family, but my brother Paul and I just itching to get out, to leave the table and go play basketball in the driveway or go down to the park and some pickup football. But mom knew we had to pray rosary right after Mass, otherwise it was going to be impossible to get, or sorry, right after dinner, to gather us. So, holy example of my mom and dad, thankful for them, and uh, this is the greatest parents. Comments from now Bishop Michael Eisen about his relationship with his parents and their influence on him as a boy and a young man in his life of faith that has now led him to be a successor to the apostles here in the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis. We have a new auxiliary bishop, Bishop Michael Eisen. Next up in our audio clips, uh, Bishop Eisen, and you probably heard this during the homily, Archbishop Hebda mentioned that as his Episcopal motto, Bishop Eisen has chosen God with us, Emmanuel, which is given to us in the Gospel of Matthew and frequently referred to during the time of Advent, which Bishop Eisen says is among, if not his favorite time of year. And uh, so he gives a little bit of a reflection on one of the Office of Readings, from that same time of year from St. Bernard of Clairvaux. Let's listen to that. I just want to close with a reference from the Office of Readings from Tuesday, the Tuesday after I learned of this appointment. So be December 20th in, in the in the breviary. <clears throat> and I think you've got a sense already if I'm talking about that conversation. So a little bit of hesitancy, and yet, you know, I'm not going to say no. So I say yes, but with... with um, does the church really know what she's doing? Itself didn't get lost on me. The guy who had been encouraging me was Archbishop Bernard had that. Now St. Bernard's got some words for me. And he's talking about the Annunciation and he's talking to Mary. And in the gist of the first part of it, I'll just kind of skim over that, was um, Mary, the Archangel waits for your answer. And then he says the whole world waits for your answer because you can set us free. And so I was relating to that a little bit, and then I changed the page, and these other lines just kind of hit me, so just a little paragraph. He says to Mary, why are you afraid? 
believe, give praise, and receive. Let humility be bold, and modesty be confident. So I don't want to break, but a lot of people would say I'm humble. (laughs) So let humility be bold, and modesty be confident. He says, this is no time for virginal simplicity to, to forget prudence. And then the last line, in this matter alone, O prudent virgin, do not fear to be presumptuous. Because that had already started with me. At first I was like, well, I'm not worthy. And then after you get some encouragement from the archbishop, you start thinking, okay, what's this going to look like? And it gets to be some excitement. I'm like, yeah, I can be a bishop. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) Who the heck am I kidding? (laughs) I'm being presumptuous. But St. Bernard says, in this matter alone, so in my yes... I can be presumptuous, but probably not again. (laughs) (laughs) Wonderful reflections on our new bishop, Bishop Michael Eisen here in the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis. It's good It's good that uh, these men have deigned to our Episcopacy here in shepherding this local church. They have a good sense of their own limitations and their need to rely on the grace of God. A wonderful reflection there. He has more thanks to give as well during part of that press conference. Um, he also took some time to give thanks for um, his siblings. He is the youngest of six. And so he had these words to say to his siblings. And then, so, uh, real brief thank yous to my siblings. <laughs> so, my sister Mary and my sister Jerry are, are both here. And they they, uh, they started the family, so Mary's the oldest, and I'm supposed to say that. <laughs> she, she much younger than me. So, um, and they both, and then, and then there's two in, uh, in Fairmont who stayed in Fairmont, Tom and Anne not with us this afternoon, but maybe watching. And my brother Paul, uh, the second youngest, lives in Woodbury. So their their generosity to me, they're um, always opening their homes for me. Um, Always knew even when I was uh, not so sure in seminary, I remember Paul saying, you've always got a home here. So um, just... They're cabins to me. Both Mary and Paul have cabins that I make frequent use of. <laughs> Mary, very generous, opens it up for a week every summer for me and my, my priest buddies. And then um, Paul's cabin, haven't been there since yesterday. <laughs> Some post-Christmas days out in Wisconsin. So, so grateful for my family. Bishop Eisen did spend a retreat from March 20th to 25th in that lake cabin owned by his sister Mary and her husband Bill. And uh, he was able to spend some time there in reflection before his ordination that has come up now. And his uh, his spiritual director for the retreat and led uh, through modern technology of Zoom and phone was Bishop Donald DeGroot of the Diocese of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And many, of course, will remember him fondly as a former priest here of the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis, who was consecrated and installed as a bishop back in 2020. Um, Bishop Eisen says of his retreat time, he was blessed to spend the week in silence at my sister's cabin, where I was able to spend four to six hours praying each day. It was really a special week, and I give thanks to God for giving me just what I needed. Finally, in his remarks that was, we were given during his press conference, once the news became known of his election to the Episcopacy, he gives thanks to Almighty God and to his, uh, his now cohort, his, uh, his brother, Bishop Archbishop Bernard Hebdell. Let's listen to that. And so my first thanks to the Lord, my second thanks to Archbishop Hebdell. I was able to talk to him later that day and just uh, a true father. Um, Ensure, uh, encouraging me, telling me, you know, there's a, there's a process. I, uh, you know, the, the church has confidence in you. Pope Francis has, has reviewed this as many advisors. So um, just encouraging me and being there, you know, he's texting me whenever you want, call me whenever you want. And he gave me permission to talk to Bishop Joseph, who I've known since we entered, we started seminary on the same day. I started in pre-theology when Bishop Joseph started in major stem, so he was two years ahead of me. We started in the fall of 1998, and I don't know if you know this, but super athletic. <laughs> so, <laughs> basketball, football, and we were having time with that in seminary. Uh, but more importantly, super supportive now uh, as a brother, as a brother priest, and a brother bishop soon for me. Uh, so thanks to them, and thank you to, to Pope Francis for having that confidence as well and making that choice. So good that 
Bishop Eisen uh, has already this fraternal connection to uh, auxil- his other his fellow auxiliary bishop, Bishop Joseph Williams. And uh, we can expect that that fellowship will continue to bear much fruit here in our local church as uh, that brotherhood, that fellowship indeed encourages Christian fraternity uh, around our local church and that there is a sharing in that love and care one for another. Um, When we see it in our leadership, we also practice it. We tend to practice it in and amongst uh, our brothers and sisters that we find around us each and every Sunday and each and every day here in the local church. Distribution of communion continues at the Cathedral of St. Paul during the ordination mass of now Bishop Michael Eisen, the newest auxiliary bishop for the Archdiocese of St. Paul and Minneapolis. As we said, it's a packed house at the Cathedral of St. Paul for the ordination mass of Bishop Michael Eisen. As you might imagine, that means even with a good number of ordinary ministers of Holy Communion, bishops, priests, and deacons who are present to help distribute Holy Communion, it does take a while to get everyone receiving the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. But an important participation in this mass and... uh, the lay faithful who have shown up to attend the Mass as well are um, filling the pews and just adding to the wonderful sense of joy and fidelity that is to be found here in the Archdiocese of St. Paul and Minneapolis. Some of you will have no doubt noticed in the familiar Gabriel's oboe that was playing underneath some of Bishop Eisen's initial comments that were played during the distribution of communion and that piece by Enrico Morricone uh, known well for, because of the movie The Mission and uh, an appropriate uh, an appropriate piece to be played as The Mission uh, well it hasn't started and it certainly hasn't ended with this mass but it continues on and the ordination of Bishop Eisen to the Episcopacy will only please God help to further that mission in our midst that Jesus may be known and loved Looks like all the distributors of Holy Communion have made their way back into the sanctuary now. And so soon we will move on to the prayer after communion.
let us pray. Hear us, almighty God, and as you have bestowed on your family the perfect grace of baptism, so prepare their hearts for the reward of eternal happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Now to get to hear a few words from the new bishop himself as he addresses the assembly. My mistake, he is actually walking through the assembly now, giving his Episcopal blessing now Indeed. to everyone yeah. present. And the people respond enthusiastically. Of course. He's accompanied by Bishop Cousins, former Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese, and Bishop Williams, current Auxiliary Bishop. As Bishop Eisen continues to make his way around the Cathedral of St. Paul, imparting his Episcopal blessing to all present. Just a reminder that, of course, you will see coverage of this Mass, this ordination Mass. Uh, you'll see great coverage of it at the, the Catholic Spirit, which you can access online at thecatholicspirit.com. Also remember to check out the Archdiocese's social media sites, Facebook and Instagram particularly, We'll have uh, images and commentary posted there as well. Simply go to Facebook or Instagram and search for Archdiocese SPM, and it should come right up where you can see images of the day and of the people there present.
I confess I don't think I've ever heard such enthusiastic response to an Episcopal blessing. Mm. Indeed, and I'm I'm sure that there is a a good representation of the parishes of St. Mary and St. Michael in Stillwater and St. Charles in oh, Bayport indeed. present as long as well as St. Croix Catholic. Uh, yeah, which is, you know, when you have one of your own being ordained to the Episcopacy, enthusiasm is just uh, part and parcel to what comes with it. Sure. Mm. Bison is all smiles as he continues to yes. impart his Episcopal blessing yep. on all present and now is re-entering the sanctuary. And perhaps now indeed we will hear some remarks from our newest shepherd, Bishop Michael Eisen. He is risen. Not bad. (laughs) So my Lebanese grandma used to say that every Easter. I'm such a sap, I never learned it in Arabic, so I apologize to all my Lebanese brothers and sisters who are here. But but some of my older brothers and sisters know it. Um, It's been a long road. It's been a long time since we announced this. And I remember back in January, I won't say which one of my siblings, I I told them that it was going to be on the Tuesday of Easter week. And they said, don't they know how busy you are that time of year? (laughs) And I think I said, the church is familiar with Easter. <laughs> but really, what better day could you ask for than to get ordained on an Easter day? As we know, it is the octave, so every day is Easter. So I'm so grateful for the Lord's love for me and how he's guided me and how he's loved me through all of you. So every one of you, so many, um, I saw people from St. Timothy's out there, from Faribault, from St. Raphael's, And of course, St. Michael's and St. Mary's and St. Charles. So thank you for your support. Um, Thanks be, of course, to to God first and foremost, but then to Archbishop Hebda, thank you for your uh, fatherliness over these last three and a half months, um, reassuring me, uh, reminding me that the Lord is calling. My co-consecrators, Bishop Joseph Williams and Bishop Andrew Cousins, thank you so much. The, The nuncio, Archbishop Pierre, thank you. All of the bishops here, thank you. Uh, a special thank you to Bishop Don DeGrood, who was my spiritual director for my canonical retreat just three weeks ago at a cabin, and he, uh, we Zoomed or called each other and just so grateful for that time. I do want to uh, just um, also a shout out for my, my servers. So every one of these servers is either a server of mine or was a server of mine and now they're in the seminary. So it's a pretty impressive list. So Dominic Romportal is is a seminarian at SJV. He's from Stillwater. A Couple of guys from St. Timothy's in Maple Lake who are in seminary, Christopher Yanta and Alex Marquette. Stephen Lang, one of my seminarians from Stillwater, he's studying in Rome and actually flew back for this. So thank you, Stephen, for making this a priority. Josh Gerrids from St. Raphael's, who was my server when I was there, and now he's in seminary. Derek Gildy, my server at St. Mary's in Stillwater, and now he's in seminary. That's the end of the seminarians, unfortunately. Five, five high school men who are um, possible candidates for seminary. <laughs> 
So Ryan Grubb and Patrick Johnson from St. Mary's, and Peter O'Malley, Aaron Romportal, not Aaron Romportal, Anton Romportal, and Andrew Drosky from St. Michael's. My deacons as well, Deacon Julian Druffner is from St. Michael's in Stillwater. We won't get into details, but he's a, a transitional deacon for Superior Diocese, so we can't keep them all. But um, he is, uh, he's given his life to the Lord, and so we love him and grateful for him serving as deacon. Uh, deacon Will Kratt, who was, I think, too young to be a server when I was in Faribault, but I still count him. So I think he was in third grade when I left Faribault, and now he's a transitional deacon to be ordained this year priest. And Deacon Dan Gannon, just a, a good friend. And I also want to just mention, um, I had hoped to have Deacon Mike Medley be my third deacon. And he's a deacon at St. Timothy's for me and my principal, and he passed away unexpectedly in February. So prayers for Anne, who is here, who uh, is dear to me as well, and their whole family. I want to thank my family quickly. It seems like I've been doing this the last 24 hours, but a lot of you haven't been at the other private events, so my, they brought up the gifts, my five siblings. As most of you know, I lost my mom and dad at relatively young. I was 21 when my dad died and 33 when my mom died. But I have not lacked for um, images of fathers and mothers from my, my brothers and sisters. So Mary is the, the matriarch. She doesn't like that title. I think it's an honor. But so Mary and then Jerry Ann or Jerry and then Tom and Anne, where is Anne? And, and my brother Paul is the second youngest, and I, of course, am the baby. So grateful for all your love and support, generosity throughout the, the years and all of this. Um, so some of my family is still in Fairmont. I've got, I've got Mokels here from Mankato, and I've got Chirpix here from, from um, Wells, and so I was not hurt in the communion line when so many of you were choosing to go to Bishop Barron for communion. So, I mean, it's not like it was my ordination day. Or, but. So God bless you all. Uh, hope to see you afterwards. It's going to be a, a long line probably, but I'll be here as long as people want a wanna blessing. So thank you and praise be Jesus Christ. seated, allow me to add some words of thanks. I promise I won't go on too long or repeat those people that uh, Bishop Eisen has just thanked, but certainly a, a word of thanks to Bishop himself for your generous yes, uh, for the witness that you've given already uh, to Christ in this church, and for the witness that remains to be given. Powerful when you think about how he's crossed paths with so many of our seminarians, right? Uh, that that uh, really eff uh, efficacious model of, of a joyful priesthood. So we're very grateful and we hope that it's going to be a joyful episcopate as well. Huh? May the Lord continue uh, to bless you. Certainly, we're so grateful for those who have participated in this liturgy. The music today was extraordinary, huh? And the choir, yes. I'm so grateful to Lawrence Lawyer, uh, to Christopher Gonza, to our cantor, to our chorale, to the brass and the timpani. I can tell you brought a tear to my eye as you sang Serdechna Matko, which I'm sure would have pleased uh, Mrs. Eisen as well. First time I've heard that in this cathedral. That was an important part of my own past. Huh? But how beautiful, the readers were excellent, the servers that Bishop Eisen mentioned were top notch. Um, really, we're, we're blessed to have with us as well, some of our ecumenical and interfaith leaders. I was particularly happy to see Rabbi as I hope that you'll get to meet uh, Bishop Eisen after mass. Huh? I know we have some civic leaders here as well. Uh, just a word of particular thanks 
uh, to the students from St. Croix Catholic. Huh? And uh, we know that you've been watching on a screen because you were a little bit on that far side, but just know how grateful we are for your prayers. I hope that you'll continue to pray for uh, Bishop Eisen in the future as well. Finally, a word of thanks to uh, the Knights and Ladies of Malta, uh, the Knights and Ladies of the Holy Sepulcher and of St. Peter Claver, certainly to our Knights of Columbus. I was a little bit embarrassed that our state deputy is in the second to the last row, but we're very grateful for all that the Knights do to, to assist any time that we gather like this. And then finally, uh, for Father Eubel and his uh, cathedral staff, the cathedral looks magnificent. Huh? And I, I know there's so much work that goes into that in welcoming such a large crowd. Uh, Archbishop Pierre, know of our gratitude to you. I'm a little bit sorry. I think that all of our sees in this province are now filled and we won't probably have the opportunity to have you back uh, here in this cathedral, but we're grateful that you're here, grateful that you brought with you your brother Guanel as well. Uh, know that you're always welcome here for sure to my brother bishops, to the priests who came out in such great number today. Know how grateful I am to you for your ministry. And then finally to uh, our co-consecrators, Bishop Williams and Bishop Cousins, who made sure that what we did today was valid. Huh? <laughs> so, I hope that you'll continue to, uh, to pray, not only for, uh, for Bishop Eisen, but indeed for this local church. We, had a glimpse not only of the seminarians who were serving, but many of the seminarians in the procession are from this archdiocese. Let's continue to pray that the Lord will, will raise um, our, our uh, young people to respond to his call, whatever that might be. Very final word of thanks. I hope that Bishop Barron, you will take back to Winona Rochester, our gratitude for the way in which your church uh, formed Father Eisen. Huh? I was happy that there were a number of priests that were here uh, from Fairmont in that region and know how grateful we are. We're particularly delighted the bishop came here to work for 3M so we could claim him as our own as well. Huh? <laughs> but know that we're most grateful. Please stand. Bow down for the blessing. O God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them with love, endow with the spirit of wisdom those to whom you have handed on authority to govern, that from the flourishing of a holy flock may come eternal joy for its shepherds. Amen. As in your majestic power you allot the number of our days and the measure of our years, look favorably upon our humble service and confer on our time the abundance of your peace. Amen. Give a happy outcome to the tasks that through your grace you have laid upon me, whom you ha on, on Bishop Eisen, whom you have raised to the rank of bishop. Make him pleasing to you in all that he does, so that, the, so that he might guide the hearts of people and pastors, and that the obedience of the flock may never fail the shepherds, nor the care of the shepherds be lacking to the flock. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia.
Applause begins once again as Bishop Eisen brings up the tail end of the procession out to the cathedral. Thanks so much for joining us for the Episcopal ordination of Bishop Mike, Michael Eisen. On behalf of Relevant Radio, Joe Conlon and the entire crew of Town Square TV, and Patrick Conley. I'm Paul Sadek. Good afternoon, and may God bless you.